Well, hey there, it's Mr. Bleeker, and this is part two of looking at the a female reproductive cycle. Now, there's a little bit more that we have to look at here, um, and I've got something uh, I think really is quite an apt way of showing this to you. Now, when we had looked at um, the role of the hypothalamus, what got the whole ball rolling was the release of gonadotropin uh, releasing hormone, which raised the follicle stimulating levels and the luteinizing levels with FSH and LH. So when we look at uh, the effects of that, FSH of course is going to get an egg ready to be released and luteinizing hormone is going to increase the release of sex hormones. For example in the ovaries that would be um, high estrogen levels and what we'll see as a result of this is the proliferation of the uterine lining. I mean that's really a function of what estrogen is doing. So it's getting the uh, uterus ready for implantation of an egg. Now the next part of this that becomes quite important is well, what happens sort of at different phases. What turns off the kind of what we started. Now they call this estradiol but what we'll think of that just think of that as estrogen. And estrogen, as the estrogen levels rise, um, they have a positive feedback. So what they, as estrogen levels start to, as the um, ovaries start to produce more and more, then what we're looking at, actually back here, high levels will advance this as far forward as you can go. So to get everything sort of at max, sort of maximum uterine wall, uh, maximum estrogen release. But there's a point at which that turns off. So estrogen hits its sort of peak level here and you can see that um, LH and FSH are also at max. Now when the corpus luteum forms uh, it produces uh, progesterone. Where estrogen had a uh, positive feedback here and uh, basically what estrogen does is convinces the hypothalamus to tell the pituitary gland to keep making a lot of this stuff. Now that ends. As progesterone begins to rise, progesterone has the opposite effect. Pro progesterone will, uh, just a second here, progesterone what it will do is it will tell the uh, hypothalamus to stop making gonadotropic releasing hormone and as a result, what it will do is it will decrease the follicle stimulating luteinizing hormone. Now there's a very good reason for that because at this point what we've done is we've done everything we can to get the uterine uh, wall ready for implantation and to cause an egg to be released. At this point, day 14, ovulation has occurred and you, know, you have to realize is it is the corpus luteum I'm just going to advance forward here. It's the corpus luteum now that is going to be releasing high progesterone levels. So the feedback on the hypothalamus is to shut this off. This gets turned off. And as a result, we don't see this or this being produced. Um, in, in The levels are basically shut right off. So that's why you'll see uh, quite a large shut off of your estrogen levels. So as long as the corpus luteum is producing estrogen, um, we don't enter another phase where an egg would develop and we don't need to do anything further to promote the uterine lining. It's already as far advanced as it can be. Okay, so once we hit this point, right, you're pretty well at max growth. Just move that forward there just a little bit. Okay, there's the diagram that I wanted. Um, those hormone levels just fall right off because of ovulation, essentially, because of the, the progesterone secreted by the corpus luteum. Now, really, this is the egg's chance. It has to be fertilized. So your progesterone levels will maximize, basically, uh, the cells in the edge of this follicle are what are secreting the progesterone. And as long as they're secreting progesterone, as long as this is viable, you'll have a progesterone spike. But this becomes scar tissue and this trails off. Now, if you think about that, what happens 
is we more or less kind of go back to we go back to this phase where now without progesterone there's no inhibition of the hypothalamus and it starts again to secrete gonadotropic releasing hormone and we start building up again for um, basically another opportunity for an egg to be fertilized okay so in our oops, just one moment in our notes um, there is a diagram looks about like this that you'll find um, sort of in your sort of in your notes but it's it's a little bit disconnected so estrogen what I'd like you to write over top of this fosters we should make a little note here it's a positive feedback loop what that really means is as long as estrogen is being supplied right by the ovaries you're going to get even more of FSH and LH so this is the positive result of estrogen it just amplifies 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 once the egg is released though and we get the corpus luteum this has a negative effect on the hypothalamus cutting off the release of gonadotropic releasing hormone which cuts off the production of this so that another egg can't advance and that kind of makes sense another egg shouldn't advance this one hasn't finished what it's doing now if the egg is fertilized I have to think about that if the egg does get fertilized and implants on the uterine wall it will start to it will secrete um, hormonal levels that will keep it in place uh, the placenta will keep another egg from developing let's meet a few of the players here this is what we call an oocyte so all of your if you're wondering where estrogen is secreted from if you look at these cells well, I guess I'd better choose a different color hey if you look at these cells around the edge here right right actually these um, this would be the, the this would eventually become the corpus luteum I'll put a little P on there this would secrete progesterone but these cells in the interstitial area right here secrete estrogen all these cells right here so the ovarian cycle um, really you have to look at its different phases so I like the diagram better right where you can see your we define them a little bit more succinctly here your follicular phase going up to just before ovulation right so think of your follicular phase as building up the follicle for the big day oops we missed day 13 right about there ovulation 14th day and then at that point you enter the luteal phase right and you can think of that name makes a lot of sense because this is your corpus luteum which starts to fade and once it does your estrogen levels will begin to rise again so on average it's a 28 day cycle now there is this matter right here of, of the secretory phase okay and that's think of the uh, uterine wall as producing sort of its maximum secretions uh, that's the point at which uh, from from day 15 to 28 that fertilization would have to occur and as I said a lot of fertilization or in many cases I should say fertilization can happen in the fallopian tube here's another good shot of it right if you're looking at the um, if you're looking at the uterine lining you could say it's prolif it's well let's say you've just had menstruation here okay which is the re release of blood and tissue because the, the estrogen levels are too low so it's um, 
the body just sloughs off the excess tissue. As the estrogen levels rise, the uterine wall proliferates, so we call that the proliferation phase. And at this point, really from ovulation on, the uterine wall is in its secretory phase, or most um, really in the best shape to take on a fertilized egg. Um, and if the egg implants, um, it will divide and produce a new organism. Look really closely at this. You see all those blood vessels? Now, what will happen when a um, when a zygote implants? Okay, so you'll have a diploid cell now. Which I'll just draw it like that. I'll use that as the nucleus. Right, that is the rest of the cell. What it will do is the placenta will literally harpoon into the lining, and it will begin to grow and become almost like I guess the arms of an octopus as it grows and spreads out, and what your placenta is looking to do is it's looking to use diffusion. So the nutrients from the mother will pass into what becomes the placenta and the waste products will say uh, nutrients, capital N there, we'll say nutrients like that, and the waste products will pass out. So waste products like CO2, urea, things like that. Um, these waste products do, of course, have to pass out of the organism. Um, they're eliminated by the mother. So the mother is actually processing uh, the children's waste, which is exchanged to the placenta. But we'll look at that in a lot more detail later. There we go. So the diagrams are the most useful part of this. So are the animations. So literally, if, if you were given something like this, on an exam, um, we always supply the diagrams. We just ask what's going on at different phases, right? One which looks at the uterus down here. Okay, so when we look at the uterine cycle, that's one aspect of it. But we also look at, have to look at the ovarian cycle up here. So we can ask you the various phases, menstruation, proliferation, where the, it's most secretory. So you'll want to know about where that, where those, um, where those uh, beginnings and ends lie. In the ovarian phase, you want to be very tuned in on uh, the lecture that I, um, the lecture that I've done, where we've chatted a little bit about um, the feedback loops. Now at this point, I'm going to uh, j just mention a few more things. I do want to talk about how the birth control pill works because it's it's a very interesting analysis to what that pill does. Once you sort of understand how the feedback loops, you can understand how the basically how the pill works. So I think we'll save fertilization for our next topic and uh, We'll look at how the birth control pill works um, right now. But for now, that's it for this particular lecture. Thanks for listening.